Hello, this is Haku Dabin, and I am here with part 4 of the end of death at, at SCP Canon. Please like the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. The grant requests for the perfection of brain transplants for identity perpetuation as treatment for age-impaired immortality. Problem. Currently, the body continues to age as normal, even if the brain does not. This conditional immortality introduces a new set of complications. Consider the current rate of body degradation, unhindered by disease and environment. At 30, the mass of the human body begins to decrease. At 50, hair turns gray and pattern hair is lost. Uh, and pattern hair loss experienced by and 30 to 50 percent of males and 25 percent of females. No information on non binary folk, but I'm guessing it's based on assigned gender at birth. At 60, the incidence of osteoarthritis develops of spikes to 53 percent. At 75, more than 50 percent of humans experience hearing loss as they lose their ability to regenerate at cochlear or sensory cells. At 80, more than half the population we got in need of cataract surgery. At 85, 25 of the population experiences a loss of muscle mass and mobility. At and beyond this point, I mean, atherosclerosis becomes the leading cause of death worldwide. In the 1400s, when the average lifespan hovered at around 30 years, humans did not experience the entirety of the aforementioned and process. Atherosclerosis Alosis is no longer the plateau, and it is incorrect to assume that permanent and atherosclerosis is the inevitable condition of humanity. Hang on. What is this? And that's taking sweet time to load. A disease of the arteries characterized by the deposition of fatty flex of fatty material on their inner walls. Oh, it's like blood clots and stuff. Seems painful. The body is fully capable of death. Once total organ failure and the resultant growth of bacteria colonies becomes a universal aspect of life, it is more apt to say that life de decomposition stands to be the inevitable penultimate condition of humanity, followed by whatever sensations can be provided once the, the brain is all that remains. It is pertinent to state that, the, that this progression assumes perfect health on the individual's part and follows only the progression of time. Solution The idea of brain transplants, also known as full body transplants, it's not new. Figure A1 from Vettingsilum, 1604 AD. It has uh, appeared frequently and primarily in science fiction, perhaps contributing to the assumption that the entire procedure is as viable as fantasy. This is not the case. An identity is formed by and restricted to the specific combination of unique neural pathways violent sheets and synapses found within an individual's brain. Beyond theory, this fact is proven. Robert J. A white successfully transferred both the brain and the head and of one monkey onto the body of another without any change in identity. His brain and head transplant and experiments uh, implemented by further experimental data. How does indicate that successful transplanting a brain and by extension an identity into another body is viable and possible? 
However, White's experiment and were not successful enough to bring the procedure out of the speculative realm. This brain transplant bo monkey could not send instructions to the host body, and the head transplant monkey was not not only paralyzed for the same reason, but dead in nine days due to immuno immuno of rejection. But its failures consequently specified the points of action. <coughs> <sighs> Nervous tissue does not regenerate, nor does it heal properly. A large, if not the singular reason why spinal cord injuries are so severe is that damage often and permanently becomes more severe after initial injury, until multiple connections ends are permanently severed, with only experimental drugs providing partial relief. The result is full body paralysis and sensory deprivation, therefore developing in regenerating neural networks and or or a treatment that will endanger regeneration is required. We cannot approach this in two ways. The first is natural synthesis, where, whereupon we modify pre-existing nervous tissue so it can mimic the so it can mimic the regenerative healing abilities found in other tissues. The second option is synthetic synthesis, whereupon a new type of nervous tissue is developed that is both omnicapable and regenerative. Natural synthesis, if successful, leads to surgical personnel treating the tissue at the point of the connection so that both the brain and the nervous system can heal into one another and thus communicate. Synthetic synthesis, if successful, would involve of having lab-produced tissue serve as an effective medium between the implant organ and the host system, leading to the same result. <sighs> we must all also overcome the issue that White's monkey, oh, that killed White's monkey, immuno re rejection. Initially, the human brain was thought to possess immune uh, unprivileged. However, this is not true. The central nervous system (CNS) utilizes a localized immune system that avoids an inflammatory response, but does not completely exclude it. However, there is also a significant body of evidence that not only does the local immune system have the potential to trigger inflammation, but also that the a peripheral, more volatile immune system is active in the CNS. The implanted brain and the host CNS must become acclimated to one another without lethal, without lethal interference from the a peripheral oral, oral immune system. This visceral quarantine can be achieved by significantly slow down bodily functions during an immediately post surgery. This suspended animation is best applied selectively, such that the brain and host system can meld into one another unmolested by the immune response. However, once the patient awakens and continues to life, flare ups may occur. This is more or simple. Many pre existing pharmaceutical products already illicit immunosuppressant as a side effect. The census of a frog that has this as its primary function is simple. At this point, the individual's ability to adhere to a prescription is the only independent and variable when considering the possibility of, of catastrophic immunorejection. Although preventing and preempting immunorejection was listed above as requiring imperatively uh, more research and development, as we stress, that most of this endeavor, holistically, is a matter of refining technique, not necessarily developing new technology. Immunosuppression is already a dedicated sphere of research in medical transplants, and as stated, at regenerative, regenerative of nervous tissue is already in life testing outside of Prometheus. Business case. As stated above, brain transplants go by another or name, full body transplants. This product, as such, can be distributed as both a commercial and medical procedure, just as reconstru reconstructive surgery is sold to both celebrities and war veterans. Regardless, this is a global market, it has great a matter or immortality syndrome is a global and universal condition. The target demographics for medical perfect brain transplants are the elderly and suffering. See figure E1.
Let's just like take a look at this picture. Look at that picture. These transplants serve as a de facto panacea for both the incurable diseases of the period and the now perpetual ravages of aging. As such, this procedure will be a viable and appealing for the incapacitated, the incurable, and the elderly. The former two demographics are significantly smaller, as the number of individuals over 70 will always be in the hundreds of millions. But of central, nevertheless. The newborn and the adult are both vulnerable to spinal injuries. Is and genetic cancers. As a medical service, this treatment would serve as a constant alternative to the treatments currently existing for serious risk diseases and conditions. Email therapy for or terminal cancer, or for example, would, would be offered alongside a new healthy body. The target demographic for a commercial perfect brain transplants, figure B2, is a wealthy and dissatisfied. Those with the resources to do so will pay to become more attractive, fit, or somebody else. But most of these desires are the motivation behind those receiving the medical service, the healthy but dissatisfied will be willing to come I mean, on their own in volition in mostly perfect health. As a commercial service, this would relegate the cosmetic surgery industry to a position of point changes that is only individuals attached to their current forms only desiring to change a specific aspect of their appearance, like their nose or cheekbones, and willing to risk side effects would forego the new service. As such, there is some flexibility to pricing. <clears throat> As a medical service, the procedure can be priced as any ordinary, complex, but life-saving operation. It would be benefit from medical insurance, be practiced by trained civilian professionals, and become more or less an integrated a part of the healthcare industry. As a commercial service, the procedure can be priced as a luxury. The elements to differentiate between the commercial from the medical service would have to be in place. However, this can simply be allowing the customer to specify exactly which type of body they wish to inhabit. Further or price adjustments, if necessary or desired, can be implemented uh, using a pricing system that varies depending on certain attributes, such as hair color, age, fitness, gender, and so on. While a surgical procedure cannot be exclusively owned or carried out, that is not to say Prometheus Labs is incapable of asserting a measure of ownership over or both or one of the two variants of service should it, it choose to. As of right now, that would best be accomplished by seizing legal ownership rights over part of, of the or the entirety of IRD regenerative if nervous tissue use, the treatment performed immediately post surgery to prevent immune ejection or both. Max, maximum profits cannot be expected by simultaneous employment. The most profitable approach would be deployment of the medical service first to both build out of goodwill, establish a market foothold, and intercepts any bugs that can be safely varied beneath both experimental technology and the condition of the patient's brain. The commercial service is best deployed after any present glitches are intercepted and demanded for an apparent non-existent service. It is racist. Delaying the commercial service will also allow us to eliminate it is to subsume any black market providers and their methods of operations, thereby saving time and bypassing the testing phase of operation. As seen in Figure 1, we estimate that perfecting the transplant will require approximately $16.2 million, distributed unevenly over three essential pillars of focus. It should be known that not only is this funding 
big projection and maximum estimate, but also what that typical ventures of, of this nature costs around $2.6 billion. We tend to act on a, a sizable amount of pre-existing research. The lack of a projected time frame will be addressed. Regenerative nervous tissue synthesis, the first pillar, must be achieved so that the implanted brain can interface with the host CNS and body. The synthetic and organic approaches as detailed above may be in investigated consecutively or concurrently. A completed product is necessary, but a strict time frame is not, as will be detailed below. As RNTS is fundamentally concerned with developing a critical set of sense that is introduced to the patients and prior to operation, pharmacology serves as the best reference for funding in standard drug approval through the FDA, for example. Is lengthy and costly, costing on average $2.6 billion. Distributed between lab testing, clinical testing, legal fees, etc. However, we can greatly reduce costs due to the renewable nature of our test subjects. GMIS as excludes damage done to subjects from in any and all cost estimates. And by keeping all of our research and development in house, most pertinent materials and resources and resources are already in stock, and we can be synthesized in laboratory settings or required from both civilian and outside parties. The acquisition of test subjects is detailed further down. Immunal re ejection prevention or, or elimination, IRP slash E, is concerned with the actual viability of the operation. The patient should be able to live out, out the host's body's life as normal. RNTS will ensure the host body will be able to receive instructions from the implant brain. And SP2, detailed below, will ensure the procedure is physically possible. Thus, IRP slash E is dedicated to preventing and or countering immunorejection. This is the most complex pillar and the one that requires the most research and development. As such, we can recycle the pharmaceutical development process again, but more fully. As this builds upon a less sizable amount of pre-existing research, this will be the most expensive pillar. Surgical or procedure for perfection, SP2, is comparatively simple. Brain transplants are not commonplace, but regardless have already been carried out successfully. Funding will be dedicated into sustaining surgical professionals who will be tasked with developing a standardized procedure for both the removal and implantation of brains. While this is a simple task, it should only be initiated following success in the other two objectives. A perfect operation with effectively regenerating a nervous tissue will fail due to the host immune system rejecting the brain. A perfect operation Within a, a rejection camera, you will fail as the brain will be able to transmit or receive instructions to the body. The very state of existence ends this project is, tri is striving to prevent. Human test subjects are not a concern. First of all, gray matter and mortality syndrome naturally means that viable brains can and be recycled for future tests independent of the excess of previous experiments. Furthermore, they are attainable. Negotiations would be required, but viable test subjects for any and all of the pillars can be elicited from the foundation or the black market. If absolutely necessary, then there is the lack of expected amount of time needed or desired to complete these objectives. The timetable for completion is present. However, as long as the project is completed, the time it takes is no longer a factor. Known issues. There is an age restriction present. An adult's brain will not fit into the skull of a child. This is a fairly minimal issue as the brain reaches its full size at around nine, at around the nine to twelve age bracket. 
Customers would still have access to a substantial variety of host files to choose from. The next issue involves the law of conservation of mass and ethical practice. Mass can neither be created nor destroyed. If a brain is being transplanted into a host body, then something must be done with the host's brain, which will, will as of now continue to live whether or not it's in a body. We have yet to develop the technique needed to create fully functional human bodies that are only missing a brain. Ideally, the medical service would only would uh, use only the bodies of humans who are comatose and or dangerously criminal. However, this is not a viable a strategy for the long term, or even short term as far as our age brackets are concerned. Or for all terms as far as the commercial or service is, is concerned. Thus, there are issues surrounding both the acquisition of host bodies and the disposal of host brains. The latter could be resolved by some method of storage for discarded brains in a way that can be considered humane by the appropriate authorities. The former is the most problematic for the commercial service, as customers who pay for the luxury of choosing a new body will be discriminated and not accept just anybody. It is also a fairly certain possibility that the commercial service will exclusively utilize youth healthy, attractive hosts. The solution to this problem, as well as the general one of host acquisition, lies within the combined fields of bioengineering and genetic engineering. Until then, or if those fields fail in their endeavors, other humans must be utilized. Thus, this issue is best understood not at one present due to logistical or viability concerns, but rather due to moral hygiene. And that was part four of the end of that. If you liked the video, I'll leave a comment down below and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time.